And uh, now we take a deep breath and uh, Cecilia Bolwinkel will come and have her Macintosh connected. Yes. We are going to, to um, hear about moving ducks. Just to, to, to say, to follow up on what Stina Gardell was saying from the Swedish producer, I've also been in these rooms so many times. I mean, it's part of my, let's say, film education. I mean, to, to screen films uh, in small houses, in small villages in Denmark, and people come and, and maybe they don't know what a documentary is, and they, but they come and they are very interested. And after that, there's a lot of discussion and the director is maybe present and you know we can go on and we can drink coffee and you can discuss the theme of the film for hours i mean it's, it's part of of what what documentaries can do isn't it and this is very important and of course for for the filmmaker if the filmmaker is present i mean to have this kind of feedback from so-called let's say regular citizens people who are not used to watch doc documentary non-professionals it's it's i think that's very very important. Yes? Are you ready? No. We are running a little late, but it doesn't matter because we have a long lunch break and then we come back again. We can just cut a little in the lunch. We, don't, we, we already, already had a kind of lunch in, in the coffee break, didn't we? Voila. It's a little green, but it's okay. Yes, hello, and uh, now I switch to the other side of the stage to talk about Moving Ducks, which is an EDN-led initiative which started last year and where I'm the project manager from, from EDN's side. Um, and as it says here, uh, the undertitle, the launch of a pan-European screening network a very ambitious plan, which I will say is still in the making. Our screening network launched only last year, 2015, and I would like to start with telling a bit about the background. The idea came from a Greek uh, producer called Rea Apostolides, who besides working as a producer, also is running a screening network, a film club in Greece, where they were doing regular screenings of documentaries. It started in Athens, and then they expanded to further cities around Greece. And what they did was showing documentaries, but also doing smaller events around the screenings, having discussions or music or something else that can attract an audience. So Rea's idea was to try to bring uh, this event to a pan-European level and have screening partners all over Europe and find partners who were doing some of the same things in their own countries and see if it was possible to, to build a network and to do common joint screenings on a pan-European level. With that idea, she approached uh, EDN. Um, and as I said earlier, we're a documentary organization really working for also creating good conditions for the documentary industry. And with the idea of bringing 
more films to more people and also um, securing more possibilities for the filmmakers to have their films screened in territories that otherwise could be difficult to sell documentaries in. We were very keen to, to start this collaboration and see where it could go. Um, and Rea, the, the Greek partner, she, she needed an organization like EDN also to apply for funding to be the coordinator of the project and to be, in a sense, uh, a neutral voice. Um, and we were then functioning as, as this European umbrella organization that could be the neutral one, not screening the films, but doing the overall administration um, and coordination of, of the partners and the network. So with that background, we started to contact different possible partners around Europe um, in order for us to make an application for the EU who had launched a new program 100% focused on audience development. In 2014, the EU came with a new support program. First, they had the media program to support the audiovisual culture. And then in 2014, they started Creative Europe, where audience development is like an overall focus that should be visible in all the different support schemes. But we then applied for, for the scheme that was 100% dedicated to audience development. And our idea was, of course, to be able to create a network focused on getting new audiences, more audience, besides the regular festival core audience, who you can, so to say, count on and who has a pre-interest in documentaries, in art cinema. Um, so, so that was the idea behind it. So here is a list of, of the partners we had on board for, for the application. So besides EDN as the overall coordinator, we started out with eight partners based around Europe. Um, the types of partners uh, are different. It was, yeah, screening clubs, festivals, um, distributors, sales agents also came on uh, later on. So a very broad range of partners. But all of them had already uh, a track record uh, in their own country. They had like um, experience and they had already built an audience in their own territory, in their own country. As you can see, one of the partners is Doc Lounge, um, based in Sweden, uh, where the director Maya is here, and she will tell more about how they work tomorrow. So she's a very good example, and that organization is a very good example of, the, of, a, of a good and valuable partner for moving dogs. Um, and you could say that the motivation for these partners to be part of Moving Dogs was, of course, to try to take their work to another level and be part of an international network and try to see if it was possible to do some joint European events to create this added value on a pan-European level. And, of course, they would then also get part of the funding from the EU, which we successfully obtained uh, to launch the program. So all the partners would get part of the funding to help pay for screening fees and to help create this added value events around the screenings, for example. And I know it, it maybe sounds a bit fluffy to say this pan-European level. And and it is also very, has proven very difficult to make it concrete, to really get the partners to work together. And you can say that the first year, last year, was also really a trial year. We are now in our second year, 
which we also have funding for, and are now more starting to find a structure on how this can work in reality. So, yeah, so in the first year we had nine central partners where everyone was, so to say, on the same level. Everyone was involved in the decision-making process. Um, and one of the big challenges we had for the first year was simply to select titles. How do you get nine partners from different European countries to agree on titles? That proved an almost impossible task. Of course, they have different tastes and they have different opinions on what works in their own country. Um, furthermore, we gave everyone, so to say, uh, an equal level of involvement. And when they were running their own initiatives in their own countries, it was very difficult to automatically um, allocate time to also do the moving ducks work. So suddenly, us in the administration were left with a lot of coordination tasks that was not possible for us to do. So we thought that it would be much better to have more clear roles. Um, and at the same time, we also wanted to attract more partners so we could screen documentaries in even more places in Europe. So for year two, where we are now, we decided to divide the roles. So we are seven partners, EDN, and then three partners who are doing the selection of the films, and three partners who are in charge of campaigning for three selected titles. So, and that has proven really more valuable to have these clear roles in the network. And then the screening partners are more side partners, so to say. They don't get any funding to pay salaries, for example, but they get funding to take part in moving docs workshops and to help pay for screening fees. And when I say moving docs workshops, I think that's a very important part of our network, um, that it's not only screening films, but it's also learning from each other and trying to build the knowledge of our partners. So this year we, for example, had a workshop where all the partners came together, focused on outreach and how to use social media and really trying to build the skills of the partners so they can also use this knowledge in the screening and the work with other films and not only with the Moving Dogs titles. And then next year, we're taking it even further, so only four central partners really to work on the coordination and then having the possibility to, to, possibility to work with a lot more screening partners who can then screen films and be part in the pan-European events that we try to organize and be part in the campaigns. And, and some of the objectives behind Moving Dogs, which I have yeah, already mentioned, is of course to, to reach new audiences, to reach a younger audience. And, and how do you do that? That's of course also one of the big questions of this conference. Um, one of the ways that we do it is we try to select more issue-based films for, for the central Moving Dogs title really trying to select films that has a very clear issue, a very uh, clear um, theme that you can build something around, that you can build an event around, that you can build a discussion around. Um, and then making documentaries accessible. So that's also, as it has been mentioned here also, not only to screen documentaries in the big cities, but taking them out to smaller cities, villages, making screenings there, maybe also making screenings in alternative venues like a, a market square or a bar or something else, yeah, where you don't need to have the traditional uh, cinema venue. Uh, and also, in that sense, secure regular screenings, 
So if you try to build an audience, they know where to go and when, and that they will be introduced to a quality film. Create pan-European events, that's also really a challenge. One of the things we have done is to do live streaming feeds. So for example, a number of the partners has, have screened a selected title, and then in, a in one of the locations, there was a discussion where all the partners could then feed into the video stream from that discussion. Uh, so that could be that the director or the protagonist of a film is invited to a discussion after the screening, and then the partners can tap into that and create added value to their audiences for a very small cost, just tapping into the feed, not having to, to invite people themselves. And the audience could still uh, post questions from uh, Holland to Athens or from Sweden to Athens. So, so you can still have this uh, interaction even though you're not based uh, in the same country. Um, and create aver awareness. Um, a lot of the films we choose also have like a, a political side. We want the audience to think and react and also give them possibilities to, to go out after seeing a film and think about it and maybe give them some opportunities also to, to do something about what they have just seen. Um, innovative outreach. That's also a learning process for us, how to do that, because it's really a skill. It's not something you just do. You just don't do marketing on Facebook. It's really something about timing and strategy, and you have to learn that from people with experience. So that's also why during the workshop, we invited an experience outreach coordinator uh, to, to teach us and also give inspiration. Um, and then, as I said, an important part of Moving Ducks is also uh, the work uh, between the partners to share knowledge um, and experiences and, and build on that level. And, and here are some examples of, of films from, from last year and, and from this year. I don't know if... if yeah, if, if these titles are, are already familiar to some of you, but they give a good idea of the type of films we, we select for moving dogs. In the beginning, we thought that we could s select maybe three or five films, but because of the rights issues where some territories were already sold, so some partners couldn't screen the films, we had to expand our catalog a bit. Um, we also tried to yeah, have these really issue-based films, trying to, for this year, also have some films that appeal to a younger audience. For example, the, the one below, uh, Marta and Nikki, which is a Swedish documentary about uh, two female hip-hop dancers from Sweden, where you can really appeal to a younger audience and invite dance clubs, dance schools, and and that sort of thing. As I mentioned earlier for 2016, we decided to have this clearer division of work, and so three of the partners are working on three main titles for this year. So these are the selected or the central titles for Moving Ducks 2016. And yes, there are four films, but um, at Home in the World and The Longest Run are put together in a package because they both deal with the refugee crisis. Um, and I will talk a bit more about these films and, and what we do with them now. Um, a Good American and The Refugee Campaign are both running at the moment. Uh, Becoming Slatan, which is a football documentary or a biopic about uh, the football player Slatan, who you see up in the corner there, will will be launched this fall. So I can't say so much about that yet. 
So the longest run and at home in the world are both two films that focus on what happens to uh, refugees when they when they come to Europe. The longest run follows two boys uh, in a prison in Greece, and at home in the world takes place in a Danish school for refugee kids. So I would just like to show you the, the trailers so you have an idea of what these films are about. So let's see if it works. Hvor langt tilbage kan du huske? Kan du huske, at du har været her i Afghanistan? Lidt. Noget af det, Dorte har fortalt mig, det var, at du havde nogle drømme. Ja. Var det noget, hvor du blev varme?
Yeah, so in actually this month, uh, September, we have this big uh, focus on the refugee crisis, um, and our partner in, in Greece is, is responsible for that. And I have just uh, listed here some of, of, of the things that are, are happening to create this awareness and also really try to work on a pan-European level. So uh, on Wednesday, uh, there was a screening, for example, in, in Athens of, of At Home in the World. And afterwards, there was a, a discussion um, with teachers from schools in the refugee camps uh, with a representative from, from UNICEF. Um, we then had partners around Europe who were also screening the film. And then afterwards, uh, via Facebook Live, the, they could f uh, screen the discussion too. And because we could do this via Facebook, the partners who were not able to screen the film or find a venue for it were also streaming live from the event in Athens. And I think we reached around uh, 32,000 uh, people on that evening and had all the time like viewers, around 1,000 viewers at the time um, of, of the discussion. Uh, via Facebook. And then they could also ask questions that were then asked in the room in Athens. Uh, we have also created a crowdfunding campaign to raise money for these uh, refugee schools. Um, we have uh, established partnerships with Al Jazeera English and UNICEF to help with the promotion uh, of the films and the events. And um, this month, EDN also launched Documentary of the Month, where we screened the longest run uh, on the EDN website to our members, also creating awareness among the, the industry, which is, of course, the core audience of, of EDN, and, and branding uh, moving docs as well. Another of the central titles is uh, A Good American. Uh, I will briefly show you the trailer here also, so it's a very short one, but just to give you an idea of, of that film. So this is a political thriller about surveillance and, and data collecting, like uh, a, a program in the States that if it hadn't been shut down, it might have been able to prevent 9-11. That's one of the statements. So it's really a, a film debating on how to collect data and how to do surveillance and if there are other opportunities than how most governments work today. So that's, of course, a whole other focus. And our Scottish partner, the Scottish Documentary Institute, is, is running this campaign, where they more focus on also targeting a political level, for example, doing a, a screening in, in Brussels within the EU, um, having a lot of debates with the director and the main character of the film, who was the one who built this system. Um, a partnership with the English newspaper The Guardian for the screening and for creating more awareness and doing really customized blog posts, not only copy-pasting, but really writing about this and, and um, yeah, doing more of a strategy on when to put out a post and creating added value so people think they feel they are getting something new and something extra.
and, and some of the, the challenges I, I already mentioned in the beginning, we had too many central partners. I think we are finding a structure now where we can have a, a coordination and then a, a big network of screening partners. Uh, and the film selection, now having a, a team that will watch films, suggest films and make the selection where the partners can then choose the films that work for them from the Moving Dogs catalog. The rights issues, when you want a big, great, fantastic documentary, it's very, you, you can't get European rights, that's impossible. So there will also always be some territories that are gone, which limits the, the, the possibility to really do something with all our partners at once. Um, just the timing of events, screenings, the partners have different agendas, different programs, different schedules. So to find places where we can do these joint events is also really a challenge. And to find actual pan-European organizations, big organizations like Amnesty or Greenpeace and like that, they, they will all have a national office. So to do promotion on a pan-European is also quite, quite a challenge. Um, then we are trying to, we, in, in some way we have two target groups. We want to brand moving dogs within the industry so we can get good films on board. Uh, and also this whole um, building of, of skills for outreach and audience building. And on the other hand, which of course is the main issue, we have the audience who, who should come and see the films. So we always have these two parallel communication strategies. And, and the workload, it's a massive workload to, to do this coordination and getting more and more partners. I think we were a bit optimistic in the beginning, but now we're facing the facts. So hopefully that can also be helped a bit with the new structure where we will have more central coordination. Some, some future plans. Uh, we got funding also for next year from the EU and yes, we are really dependent on, the, on this EU funding in order to do all these extra events. Um, so we will try to do more events live, but also more online. Um, we will continue to do workshops for our partners with um, giving them new knowledge and new tools to use in their daily work. Um, see if we can do a pan-European VOD, a video on demand release. Um, try to reach younger audiences, have more focus on that. And again, really try to find new ways of innovative promotion. And unfortunately, I'm just the coordinator. I can't give you all the great ideas how to do innovative promotion, but we hope we can get there. And we also hope that, that some of the findings we do, we plan to publish like a workbook for the industry to, to share the experiences we, we gather in this process. And I, I think we're really trying to, or we are finding our, our structure now. So I'm looking very much forward to, to next year. Um, yeah, and, and visit our website that's really f uh, focused on, on the industry, listing the partners and the films, and contact me for, for any questions. Almost exactly 30 minutes. <laughs> You're so good. These young, young women, they know exactly. They are so good in timing. Okay, uh, Cecilia. Um, Let's say that Irina and Docker, huh? uh, they would like to take part in Moving Dogs. Is that possible? Um, we always welcome new, new screening partners. And screening partners can come from all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's more the, the titles we screen. They, they have, the main titles uh, have to be European. But screening partners can also come from outside the, uh, Europe. And I think that's something we will have even more focus on in next year. So, so Russian screening partner is possible? 
That yeah. is possible, yes. Good. And uh, Russian participants in the workshops, which I know are very good, I mean, these are about outreach, etc. Is, are they also welcome? They can come as observers, or how, how can that be? Yes, if they become an official screening partner, they can yeah. also join join the workshops. Oh. Um, yeah, and we unfortunately we don't have a big budget for it, but I'm sure we can find a way to make it work. Okay. Second question is the the filmmakers. What's in it for them, materialistically, money-wise? Um, one of the ideas was, and that's also something we're trying to do, is that we can, for some of the films, we do like a joint contract. So in, within one contract, the, the rights holder gets maybe, I don't know, five or seven territories, and they get the money in one go because it's paid centrally from, from moving docks. So that could also include territories like yeah, Cyprus or Greece, or we had Portugal, where it can be very difficult to, to sell a documentary for, for a decent amount. Did you mention a figure? Uh, no, it depends from partner to partner. Okay. Because partner to partner, some of our partners pay screening fees, other pay a minimum guarantee. So it depends on the partner and the film and the territory. And this, uh, the longest run, uh, the, the film which is now documentary of the months, online EDN, can, is accessible for everybody here? Um, well, the online on EDN is only for EDN members. Okay. So become a member. <laughs> okay, any questions, any comments to, yeah? Спасибо за презентацию, очень интересный опыт, на мой взгляд, вот таких показов. You hear the translation? Yeah? Uh, у меня есть комментарии по поводу ваших фильмов. Uh, просто, может быть, не все знают, но вот фильм о Златане выходил в России в прокат на 20 копиях, uh, преимущественно в Москве. Но вот я сейчас посмотрела по цифрам, он собрал 12 тысяч евро в прокате. А фильм «Good American» был у нас на фестивале «Докер», была российская премьера, так что мы с вами чуть-чуть совпадаем в программировании. У меня вопрос. Сколько по времени вы готовите вот одно такое большое событие? То есть за сколько вы начинаете готовить аудиторию, анонсировать? Ну вот, вот, вот такое масштабное событие. Сколько вы... Прям реально времени тратите на подготовку. I think these titles were selected in, in February. Uh, then we had a workshop in April where we were using the, these central films uh, as case studies. They're really uh, sharing ideas on how to do these campaigns. So that was in April. And now, yeah, the refugee and the good American are, are, are launching now, and I think Slatten next month. Yeah. More comments? Or maybe the Documentary Guild could be a partner. Ну, наверное, можно. У нас тоже вопрос э, с правами э, неоднозначно решен. Э, в частности, фильмы, которые поддержаны э, государством, Министерством культуры, вот там обсуждались эти вопросы, да, хотел добавить, но вот воспользуюсь случаем, и сейчас это тоже будет э, по теме. Э, у нас в контрактах э, с Министерством культуры уже записано, что мы обязаны предоставлять простую и не исключительную лицензию Министерству культуры для общеобразовательных целей и в целях популяризации отечественного кино. То есть, в принципе, они у нас в любой момент могут взять фильм и показать его. Ну, понятно, что они не могут его разместить на телеканале или пустить в коммерческий показ, но, допустим, сформировать программу из своих фильмов из Министерства культуры, само Министерство культуры может, и мы им обязаны отдать это бесплатно. Это будет считаться популяризацией национального кино. Вот. В свою очередь я хотел спросить вот как раз эти вопросы. 
вы так сказали, что кто-то платит, кто-то не платит. Вот на самом деле, так как вы занимаетесь действительно уже прокатом, и я так понимаю, в нем экономическая составляющая имеется, то вот партнеры скрининговые, они входят в партнерство и что-то платят вам за то, что вы даете им фильмы, и что получает продюсер, который тоже дает вам фильм вот в эту программу. То есть вот, если можно, немножечко поподробнее о взаимоотношениях партнеров, я понимаю, что на базе самого Moving Dogs. Mm, yeah, um, so for example, if, if you are a screening partner, Uh, you will get uh, funding from the Moving Docs central budget to help pay for, for screening fees. And then you would have to, to also spend a certain uh, proof expenditure in your own country because that's part of the, the EU regulations. When we get support from, from the EU, we always have to prove matching funds. So each partner is responsible for proving that they have also spent money in their own territory apart from what they have received from moving docs but then they receive um yeah payment to to pay screening fees and then we also have an extra pot of money for events because we're really trying to encourage all the partners to to create this added value around screenings so if they do a special event if they invite a director or the protagonist or want to do a, uh, a tasting of special food related to the film, then they can receive uh, money, f money for that as well. I think he was also referring to money, but if you don't want to talk about that. Uh, the specific numbers? Yeah. Uh, again, it's different from, from partner to partner and, and, and from year to year. Um, I think most of the screening partners next year get around uh, 2,000 euros to help pay for screening fees. And then we have around, um, I think, around 10,000 euros um, to pay for, for events and inviting uh, directors, protagonists. Good. I mean, this is supported by the media program or Creative Europe, uh, it, it is called now. And even if uh, yeah, European Union is, is kind of falling apart, I mean, this, in this uh, case, the, uh, the support for documentary, for film is, is very strong and, and, and really, I would say, essential for what is, what is happening in Europe, actually. This is uh, one of the good things. Do we have more questions in the room? Otherwise, thank you very much, Cecilia. She will be here. You can ask all kinds of questions. We will now have one hour of lunch break. Please come back in time in one hour. Thank you. Thank you.